Imagine you are a pricing manager and you plan your next price promotion. Your boss comes into your office and tells you, good news, you have an unlimited promotional budget. You say something like, Woo! cool. And you think, we go all in. Usually we have this $5 coupon, but now we increase it to $25. You launch the campaign, you kick it off, you watch at their sales and revenue numbers and you find revenue drops. Hmm, that's not good, you think? And you look deeper into why this could have happened. Do you have an idea what has happened? We will find out today. promotional tool that you as a pricing manager applied were coupons redeemable for various products of a specific brand or product line. The technical term for these kind of products are vertically differentiated products. And this pretty much means for interchangeable substitutable products. For example, this is a X dollar off coupon valid for any Apple notebook or any Lindt chocolate gift box, so for different specific brands, or for any of the different buffet menus in your favorite Korean restaurants. So this is a specific product line. What happens if we increase the coupon value from $5 to $25? Two mechanisms kick in. The first mechanism is the budget increase mechanism, and the second mechanism is the savings comparison mechanism. Hmm, what are they? The budget increase mechanism means the following. You increase the coupon value from $5 to $25 and this basically means you give your customers 20 more dollars for spending. And this happens. The budget increase mechanism means customers have a higher budget so they can spend more money and they buy more expensive products. The second mechanism is the savings comparison mechanism and this is a bit trickier. Let us look at a concrete example. Imagine you have two different products, product A for $40 and product B for $60 and your coupon can be redeemed for any of these products. So if you have a $5 coupon, your savings, your relative savings for product A are 5 divided by 40 it's 12.5% and for product B it's 8.3%. So the savings difference in percentage points is 4.2. So now imagine you increase the coupon value to 25. All of a sudden you save 62.5% for product A and 41.7% for product B. And the savings difference in percentage points is almost 21%. The savings comparison mechanism means customers choose the option that delivers the higher relative savings. So they are not looking into what else can I buy with more money. They look at, okay, well, how much do I save at a given product with a given coupon value? And in this study, researchers found that there might be a price savings difference threshold after which customers would rather buy the product that has a higher savings versus lower savings, meaning you increase the face value of your coupon and therefore customers buy the item at a lower price because the relative savings are higher. This leads to a relationship between coupon face value and spending amount per transaction or probability of choosing the high priced option that follows an inverted U. Meaning you increase the coupon face value steadily, steadily, steadily and at the same time the spending amount per transaction goes up. But after a certain turning point it goes down. So you cross the threshold that customers implicitly have in mind between high and low savings and now they find that 
additional savings are more important than a higher budget for spending. After this turning point, a higher coupon value increases the perceived savings differences between the low price and the high priced option so that the spending amount per transaction drops after this point or the probability of choosing the high priced option goes down again. When do we expect an inverted U relationship between the face value of a coupon and the probability of choosing the high priced option or the transaction amount? And when do we expect a linear positive relationship between the coupon face value and the probability of choosing the high price option and the amount per transaction, meaning the higher, the more sales do we make. Researchers found four factors. The first factor is the price. So when customers are more likely to compare prices and implicitly the researchers concluded that for high price items that might be the case, expensive products lend themselves more to moderate face value coupons. So increasing to a high face value might reduce the transaction amount. For less expensive products, we expect this linear relationship. The higher, the more sales do we expect. The second is the number of eligible items. So researchers found if the cognitive load is high, Customers are less likely to calculate these percentage savings. So for large sets of eligible items, a higher coupon value might also lead to a higher transaction amount. And if this set is small, we are more likely to expect the inverted U relationship between coupon face value and amount spent per transaction. The third factor is the motivation to compare prices. If this is high, customers might calculate savings difference between two options and express an inverted U relationship between coupon face value and the amount spent per transaction. If the motivation of customers is very low to compare prices, we will see a positive relationship, so higher coupon values increase the amount spent. And similarly, if the preference for a specific product feature or benefit or for a specific brand is high, Customers are less likely to switch to low price alternatives. If this is high and strong, a higher coupon face value also increases sales. The opposite is true if the preference for specific benefits or brands is low or weak, then we are more likely to expect an inverted U relationship and a higher face value actually leads to lower spending per transaction. So in this case, a moderate face value is more appropriate. I hope these tricky insights about the face value of coupon sent a spark of inspiration to you. And if you seek more inspiration on pricing and psychological pricing, join me at pricingnuggets.com. I see you there.